Hello out there everyone. Thanks for taking in my video today on piecewise functions. Let's start here with a definition of what a piecewise function is. A function represented by a combination of equations, each defined with a specific domain. All right, so piecewise function is not just one function all the way through. It could be a combination of two, three, four, five, any amount of equations that's split up into different parts of a graph. So here is our first look at a piecewise function. We'll jump right into it today. Here's a piecewise function. That's what it looks like. We're going to call it f of x, and we're going to, we're going to evaluate x is negative 3 and x is negative 1. Okay? So your first thought might be, well, where do I put x equals negative 3 in? There's two different equations here. Where do I put it into? Well, that's why you look at the domain. Negative 3 is less than negative 1. So we want to put that where x is less than negative 1. So we're going to use the equation f of x equals x minus 4 for this problem. So f of negative 3 equals negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. So f of negative 3 is negative 7. Part B, because negative 1 is equal to negative 1, we want to look right there, right, where x is greater than or equal to negative 1, because this is equal to negative 1. So we're going to use the equation f of x equals 3x minus 1 for this one. So for B, f of negative 1 is going to be 3 times negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 3 minus 1, or negative 4. And that is how we will evaluate a piecewise function. Just figure out which of the two or three or four expressions to put the x value into. Graphing. Graphing can be a little bit trickier. Look where the domain is split. The main split here at negative 3. So here is actually equals negative 3. What that means is our graph is going to be split at that point. Our graph is going to change at that point. We're going to graph this line to the left of negative 3 and this line to the right of negative 3. So how do we do that? Well, we can take negative 3 and put that into here. And we get negative 3 halves plus 4. So 4 minus 3 halves would be 2 and a half. So negative 3 comma 2 and a half. But it's an open circle right there. Why? because this is not equal to negative 3. Then, we could do one of two things. We could just put more numbers in that are less than negative 3 into here and get those y values back and plot them. Or, we know the slope is 1 over 2, so we could just go not up and right, because that would be to the right of this line, which we don't want, but down and left. Down one, left two, down one, left two, down one, left two. And our line will look something like that. Okay, the second part of this, again, we can start by just putting negative three into here. And let's see what we get back. We would get back two minus two, so zero. Negative 3 comma 0. That gets a closed circle because that one is equal to negative 3. So negative 3, 0. We'll work for that one. Now, again, we could pick more points to the right of negative 3 and get those y values back if we want to. Or we can just, you know, it's a line with slope negative 2 thirds. We can go down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3 until we have a good picture of what that graph looks like. 
Okay, very important though, do not leave this highlighted line in here. That is not part of the graph. This is the graph. Okay, that is all that should be on your final answer as you graph it. The highlighted line there was just there to show us, to remind us that we're gonna separate that graph at negative three. Let's take a look at the second one. This one gets separated at one. So one, and also at four, okay? One and four. So the first one is the parabola, and that's less than one or equal to one. So if we put one in there, we get one back. So one comma one is a point on that parabola. And it gets a closed circle because it's equal to one. Now you can pick some points to the left of one until you know what this graph looks like. If you put zero in, you get zero back. Negative one comma one, negative two comma four, negative three comma nine. And our graph would look something like that. Now between one and four, we're gonna use root x. So if you put one in, you get one back. Well, that point's already there. We don't gotta make a point again, it's already there. So that's our first point. Two comma root two, three comma root three, four comma root four, which is two, so four comma two. That gets an open circle because we're not equal to four there. And our graph should look at the root graph, which looks like that. And again, make sure that these vertical lines are not there in the end. If you need them there to start, it's fine, but they should not be there in the end. There's nothing to the right of four. So there should be nothing to the right of four on our graph. All right. Here's one, it has three pieces. So our domain is divided up at negative one and at positive two. To the right, sorry, to the left of negative one. So if we put negative one in, we would get negative one comma three. And that gets a closed circle because it's equal to negative one. Now if you pick some points to the left of negative one, like negative two, negative three, negative four, you can plot those y values, or we could just realize this is just a line with slope one. There's our line with slope one. Now between negative one and two, we're gonna use this. So if we put negative one in there, we would get two times one, which is two. But that gets an open circle. If you put zero on there, you get zero back. If you put one in, you get two back. If you put two in, we would get two times two squared, which is two times four, which is eight. And that gets a closed circle because it's equal to two. This is an open circle, closed circle. And it's just gonna be a parabola that looks like this. And the third piece, is just a horizontal line, y equals negative three. So if you put two in there, you would get negative three back. Open circle, because it's not equal to. Three, negative three, four, negative three, five, negative three, six, negative three, until we know it's just gonna be a horizontal line, like this. And once again, make sure these are gone. And there's your piecewise function. Okay. This one is only divided up at four. We're not gonna draw the vertical line this time. Let's just pretend like we don't need it. We can do this without it. So to the left of four, we're gonna put in four. We get four minus two, which absolute value of that is two. So four comma two. And that gets a closed circle because it's equal to. Three, one, two, zero. One minus two is negative one, absolute value of that is one. Zero, two, one, negative three. You get the picture now. It should look something like this. And to the right of four, it's just a line y equals four. So four comma four, open circle. Five comma four, six comma four, seven comma four. And there's your graph. Two more. X is less than negative one. We're gonna plot just Y equals negative one. So negative one, negative one, open circle. They have two negative one, they have three negative one, they have four negative one. 
between negative one and one, x cubed. So if you put negative one in there, we get negative one back. We already got that point, but it's open, but now we're gonna fill it in because that point is a closed circle. Zero, zero, and one, one, also gets a closed circle. It should look a little wavy, the x cubed graph. And then to the right of one, it's just one comma one. So it should be an open circle there, but it's already filled in, so it's a circle. And then all those points there, just a horizontal line at y equals one. All right, last one. When x is less than zero, we're gonna do the opposite of x. So if you put zero in, we would get zero back, but that is an open circle because it's less than zero. Negative one, so negative negative one is one. Negative negative two is two. Negative negative three is three. You can get the picture from now. Or you can just say, all right, it's a slope, a line with a slope of negative one. For this one, x equals zero, we put zero in, we get zero back. Hey, that's a closed circle now. One, one, two, two, three, three, and you get the picture here, we're gonna go this way. So the question there, what function does the graph of number six resemble? Well, we should recognize this as the absolute value graph. Why is that the case? Well, if you look at the piecewise function, if x is positive, we get a positive back. If x is negative, we get a negative negative back or a positive. So we're always doing positive, and that's why it looks like the absolute value graph. All right, last one going backwards. Here's a picture. Now let's write this definition for this down. So hopefully we see three pieces, right? So we need three parts of our domain, okay? The first part is just a horizontal line. So that's just y equals a number, it's y equals one. Now we gotta write its domain. The domain goes from negative five to zero inclusive. So negative five less than or equal to x less than or equal to zero. The second one's a parabola. We'll come back to that in a second, but let's just write down its domain. It's gonna be zero to three Exclusive on zero, inclusive on three. So zero less than x less than or equal to three. And the last one's another line. Its slope is three over one. So it's gonna be three x. Its intercept we can find in two different ways. You can use point slope form to find it or you can just count backwards. Three, one, three, one, three, one. Would be negative seven. And that's domain is three exclusive to infinity. So x is greater than three. So that's what we gotta do is we gotta figure out this parabola here. So what do we know about it? We know it's flipped upside down and we know it's moved up three units, right? So if this is a normal parabola, flipping it upside down will give us negative x squared and moving up three units will give us plus three. So negative x squared plus three. And this is our rule for this piecewise function graph here. That'll do it for our look today at piecewise functions. Thanks as always to tuning into my videos.